to my channel. Tonight I'm going to be talking about a very common question that I get asked for people that are interested in intuitive eating, which is how possible is it to lose weight as an intuitive eater? So tonight's video is going to be sharing three secrets about intuitive eating and weight loss uh, that might surprise you in the answers that I'm going to give that are going to help you get the most incredible health transformation. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, then do feel welcome to uh, click the subscribe button and the bell, and then you'll be notified every time I publish a new video uh, all about health, wellness and intuitive eating, of course. So as a fully healed um, binge eater and also fully recovered from other uh, disordered eating patterns um, that stemmed from dieting, um, I just wanted to offer all my support to any of you watching that are maybe at the beginning of your journey with intuitive eating and you're not sure whether it's going to work, but you know that feeling how you feel right now in your body and feeling stressed about food and, you know, feeling all of that overwhelm and frustration about diets and your body. Um, it's, it's just not a good place to be and there is a way out and there is an answer and intuitive eating is an incredible self-care framework to help you um, get your health where you want it to be and also feel free and peaceful and looking after yourself and it's just a million miles away from how diets make you feel so um, I really hope this video does support you and I really do understand what it feels like to you know find it very difficult to um, feel okay in your body when you know you're thinking about diets all the time um, my background profession is physiotherapy and I also trained as an intuitive eating counsellor a few years ago um, so not only have I um, healed my own relationship with food and my body um, through doing the 10 principles of intuitive eating myself um, I've also turned it into a passion and I support lots of lovely clients um, that are also finding this work amazing in how it's helping them to heal their relationship with food and their body and sort of break free from dieting and all the stress that goes with it so I really do hope this video helps you in any way that it can and you know just know that you're not alone and that there is hope to feel differently to how you're feeling at the moment um, and it's just one step at a time and this might be for you the first step um, with intuitive eating to you know really get the health that you deserve. <laughs> So secret number one about intuitive eating and weight loss is that it's okay to desire weight loss um, coming into this work. Some people feel that they maybe shouldn't um, desire weight loss or they don't know sort of what to expect really when they've been dieting and they're discovering intuitive eating and you know there's quite a lot of information out there um, to read about it and sometimes it does feel a little bit confusing and um, so just to reassure you it's perfectly okay to come to this work with a strong desire for weight loss and um, we're all entrenched in diet culture it's a multi-billion dollar industry and it's been around for decades if not longer so a lot of people, including myself, before I did this work, you know, may have had years and years and years of uh, different beliefs around body image, weight and health, and it can all get really quite intertwined. Um, so you may come to this work with a particular set of beliefs that, you know, do feel very true for you and weight loss may for you be a really big thing and um, that has always been a priority because you've always felt that that was maybe what you needed to do to improve your health or maybe for you um, it represented being in a thinner body as being happier or more successful or being more accepted, all of those things. Um, when the reality is that none of that is none of that is true. Um, and if you've had any experience of dieting and you found yourself at a lower weight than you started, 
um, often when you get to that weight, you're actually not happy. You're not, you're not, you don't feel the way you hoped you'd feel, or you maybe think, oh, if I just lose a few more pounds, then I'll feel the way I want to feel. So they're very alluring uh, diets and the pursuit of weight loss is, is very, very enticing. So it is completely understandable um, that you may come across something like intuitive eating and think, well, that all sounds really good and can I lose weight? Um, so in short, the answer is you can you can lose weight as an intuitive eater. Uh, however, it's not the actual goal of the work. Um, and I'll explain why. Um, so the, the purpose of intuitive eating is to heal your relationship with food and body. Um, so that you can live a really healthy life and honour your health by being able to eat all foods with trust, peace and freedom, essentially, and also honour your emotional and physical needs um, in combination. Um, the problem with wanting to lose weight and prioritising that in intuitive eating work is that it interferes with the the, the process of, of doing that healing, because whilst ever you're focused on an external value of weight loss, um, it, it sort of stops you from being able to really tune in fully to the sort of healing mechanisms and the ability to listen to your body, uh, to undo the damage that diets cause. So um, you don't have to completely abandon the desire for weight loss coming into this work and you don't have to suppress it. In fact, it's actually really, really good to talk about it. Um, but what we sort of ask you to do uh, as you go through this process is just to gently put it on the back burner um, and be willing to do that so that you can really focus on really doing the work fully um, and healing your relationship with food and body um, and the rejecting diet culture. Um, so to sort of follow on from that point, um, you can get a variety of different outcomes from doing this work regarding your weight. So some people doing this work do find that they lose weight um, some people find that they gain weight because they, they actually needed to. Uh, and some people find that their weight actually stays the same. So they neither lose nor gain weight. Um, so there's a variety of different outcomes that are a result of this work. But the difference doing intuitive eating is that is not the focus. It's not the focus of the work, but it can be a side effect um, of doing this work. Um, when I go into the next secret, I'll share a little bit more about how you can um, redefine um, a healthy weight in a much more gentle, kind, supportive and respectful way to your body um, to support you really in trusting this work and, you know, still feeling able to implement it um, and know that it is going to get you far better results than any diet ever could. Um, you know, diets are just a complete manipulation really um, and especially over the last few years they've just become more and more challenging in how they've co-opted you know healthcare and they're just so deceptive um, so it's maybe quite a good opportunity just now to just reflect on, you know, what weight means to you. Um, you know, have you sort of had challenges with weight loss in the past? And if so, what were they? Have you had success with weight loss? And if so, what was it? And how long were you able to sustain it? Because generally speaking, 95% of all attempts at dieting, so basically any pursuit of intentional weight loss, it fails within the first two to five years and uh, many people not only gain back the weight they lost, but they gain more weight on top. Um, and there's, again, loads of evidence to show that um, uh, weight cycling, as it's called, so just constantly going on and off diets and losing and gaining weight back actually causes more harm to your health than if you stay at a you know, a naturally higher weight consistently. So there's just so much benefit to intuitive eating and so many negatives to um, dieting and pursuing weight loss. Um, so I hope that helps and uh, I will share secret number two. <laughs> So 
So secret number two about intuitive eating and weight loss is the introduction of the set point weight theory. Um, it's a really great tool that I discovered uh, quite early on in my intuitive eating journey myself that I found really supportive, um, much though I felt really accepting of letting go of pursuing weight loss um, in order to do the work. Um, I was still quite anxious at the start of um, doing the 10 principles about really leaning into trust and letting go of control and letting go of like measuring and weighing myself or, you know, just doing something to to kind of sort of have what I thought at the time I needed, which was some control. Um, so it, this is a tool that is optional. Um, you don't have to use it if you feel quite comfortable, you know, doing the 10 principles as they are and that feels really good to you. You're welcome to to do that. And that's fantastic and really supportive. And um, if you think that you might just like a little bit more of an indicator of how else you might be able to sort of mon monitor, for want of a better word, um your health without getting on the scales and maybe it would just lessen the sort of pressure you're putting on yourself or the overwhelm about how to know whether you're honoring your health as you do this work this healing work and um, then this can be a really supportive way of, of helping you through that phase and um, if at any stage though you feel with the set point weight theory that it, it is feeling rigid for you and it is feeling like you're turning it into a set of rules you know or you're getting stressed at all with using it and um, then you're always encouraged to sort of just reflect on that and you know feel free to to stop you know using that if it's actually counteractive counterproductive to you doing the work because it's really important um as i've said in the sharing the first secret that you know you put weight loss on the back burner um, and that we realise that health is so much more than than just the physical attribute. It's mental, spiritual, emotional. Uh, all of those components are, are really what true authentic health is. Um, and so we don't want to, to sort of get you jumping from one set of um, rules and measures to another if that's what set point weight theory would actually make you feel like. So I'll go through the theory and I'll explain the sets of behaviours that are um, the way to sort of look at where you are with your set point. And then you can decide whether you think that's something that would help you or whether maybe it's something that would, you know, not be uh, supportive uh, in doing this work. Um, so I discovered set point weight theory at the beginning of my intuitive eating journey um when i came across this fantastic book that was recommended um it's really well known in the intuitive eating movement it's by a wonderful author called um linda bacon um she's got a phd in all sorts of really clever stuff <laughs> and um this book i found absolutely life-changing when i got it a few years ago so i can't recommend it highly highly enough health at every size um, it really dismantles the lies, I would say, that are, that are told about um, weight in the sort of weight loss diet culture world. Um, and again, evidence based. So like, you, you just can't ask for better. If you want to challenge something, come at it with some evidence. And it, it just makes it so much more helpful um, and credible in order to sort of help you gain that trust, you know, in moving away from diets and coming into this intuitive eating work and having in that belief that it, it is going to you know get you the results that you want the diets just couldn't give you because they're not meant to because it's not sustainable and um, so the the set point weight theory has been around for ages and um, as i said i discovered it through this book but it you know it's available and you can uh, search for it and it comes up in lots of different different formats and different contexts but um, my understanding of it from what i've read and from the training i've done to become a certified intuitive eating counsellor um, is that your set point weight is the, just the weight you were naturally meant to be um, that you're born to be as part of your genetic blueprint so a bit like you know we're all born to have a certain shoe size set point weight theory is sort of complementary to just acknowledging that you're born to be a particular weight and whatever that weight is 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 absolutely healthy for you and um, so you know it doesn't have to look a certain way and um, it's more about connecting with sets of behaviors 
that make you feel um, the best that you can. Uh, and again, incorporating physical health, mental, spiritual, psychological health, all those really important components. Um, and your set point weight naturally fluctuates uh, by around 10 to 15 pounds throughout different seasons of your life. Um, and it's basically like having an inbuilt thermostat. Um, so there's lots of clever science that explains what goes on internally. You know, the body's just so clever um, and complex. Um, but basically, you've got an inbuilt thermostat that regulates your weight um, and will always seek to get back to its set point weight. Um, whether you eat more than is needed to feel, you know, at your healthiest or whether you eat less than is needed for you to be at your healthiest in terms of set point. The body always wants to seek balance. It always wants to re um, equ equilibrate always wants to seek balance anyway, <laughs> balance and harmony and like the middle ground for you to function at your best and to feel at your best. Um, so if you interfere with your set point, for example, by controlling your food intake through restriction or perhaps then that leads to overeating, binge eating, that can manually override your set point and then that can lead you to either being over it or under it. Um, and over time, this can lead to changes in your metabolism, for example, and that can adjust your, your set point range over time. Um, so by following the intuitive eating process and the framework, that actually facilitates a return back to your natural set point where your body functions optimally um, without external interference. So by that, I mean diets. Um, so the invitation here, which I appreciate is easier said than done when you're first coming into this work, but the invitation is that this may mean that you have to accept that the weight that you've wished to be for through dieting um, may not actually be the weight your body wants to be. And that can take a little bit of time to, to sort of fully accept and surrender to, but it's, it's really important. And the more you do the intuitive eating work, the more comfortable you will feel with what that really means for you um, as you dismantle diet culture and bring in all these new practices of, you know, respecting your body, um, dealing with your emotions with kindness um, and using non-based food coping strategies to deal with stress, etc. And bringing in all these healthy practices, then you know that does certainly help as well to change your previous perspective on this pursuit of weight loss and what it meant for you and your body. Um, so yes, yeah, some people will gain weight, some people will lose weight and some people will stay the same weight um, through the intuitive eating um, process. So here's some examples of um, how of patterns eating patterns and beliefs that can help you identify if you're over your set point weight under it or whether you're achieving the natural set point weight for you so if if we start with um how to achieve your set point weight um then the question that you would be asking is do you naturally respond to signals of hunger, fullness and appetite without fixating on your weight or food habits? And does eating feel effortless and enjoyable? Um, so that, that might be a definite no for you at the moment. So that's just the sort of invitation to know um, where to start with asking yourself whether you're actually at your set point or not at this moment. Um, you will know when you're in your set point range with, again, these are examples with some of the following behaviours and these are all um, outcomes that you'll get from going through the intuitive eating process. So the ability to consistently listen and respond to hunger and fullness cues, uh, decreased preoccupation with food, having normal energy levels, uh, decreased emotional eating patterns, uh, absence of binge eating, not restricting any food groups, uh, eating foods that actually just make you feel good and that, that can be in a variety. So eating a variety of foods that you enjoy that are satisfying to you and um, being able to manage stress, uh, not using food to deal with negative emotions, getting enough sleep, uh, regularly moving your body for fun and joy um, and the list goes on. 
So you can see already how different it is when you use a tool like this in the way that you measure your health to know if you're at a set point, um, healthy set point is completely different to how you would um, pursue a, a goal, for want of a better word, with weight loss. It's a much more gentle awareness of lots of different behaviours um, and patterns with your relationship with your food and body that determine whether you're at your set point weight or not, as well as the ability to listen to your uh, body's physical signals of, you know, hunger, fullness and all those things, emotions, all those sorts of things. Um, if you are wondering if you're above your set point weight, then some examples of that would be um, regularly eating beyond comfortable fullness, not being aware of hunger and fullness cues, um, any binge eating patterns that you've got, um, restricting and binge eating. Uh, if you regularly eat for emotional reasons rather than um, physical reasons um, and sort of going through periods where you just feel like you're eating out of control um, like anticipating that you're going to start a new diet and um, like skipping meals to save up for and maybe like a feast so that like famine feast type mentality um, like eating as a coping mechanism so when you're tired or angry uh, or bored things like that so again that sort of comes under more your um, emotional eating umbrella um, eating really quickly as well so if you're eating without that mindfulness you know just eating quite rapidly and not really aware of what you're eating till it's gone and um, all those would be examples of you know eating beyond that um that natural sort of fullness um, and not eating with like presence and groundedness so they would all be really common examples of you know potentially being over your your natural set point so just moving on to um, examples of things you might notice um, if you're under your set point weight um, would be things like um, feeling tired all the time. That can be um, a sign if you're often very cold. Uh, if you feel like you're constantly preoccupied with food and feel desperately hungry as well as a result of that and don't honour your hunger. Um, waking up with an overwhelming urge to eat, uh, having difficulty sleeping because of the the intensity of the hunger that you're noticing, uh, having a really low sex drive uh, and also absence of periods in women can be uh, another another example of being under your set point weight, the uh, weight, set point weight, sorry. <laughs> um, and Potentially, if you suffer from any of the following, apathy, fatigue, irritability and or depression. So, you know, it doesn't have to be that there's just one of these. It can be a combination of a few or, you know, just a couple of them. But they're just, again, all different things to recognise and see where you fit um, in these examples. <laughs> So secret number three about intuitive eating and weight loss probably won't be a surprise to you, to be honest. Um, it's rejecting diet culture. It's a fundamental uh, principle to sort of really come to terms with as part of intuitive eating and so, so important. Um, you know, in order to get the health you deserve, um, diet culture has to be surrendered um, and you're going to bring in a whole new set of much more empowering beliefs uh, to heal your relationship with food and your body um, that's going to give you absolutely fantastic health, peace, freedom, trust, you know, not feeling out of control around foods anymore, being able to participate fully in life um, and you know, diets just don't do any of that, do they? I know myself because I've been on loads of them. So I am definitely speaking from experience. They they, they, they ruined parts of my life at times um, when I was in the thick of them. So um, just to sort of reiterate um, why letting go of diet culture is so important. Um, they just don't work. Um, as I said earlier in the video, 95% of them fail in the long term and, you know, you either gain the weight back you've lost or even worse, you might gain more back. Um, diets are a predisposer to disordered eating, um, overeating, binge eating, 
um, and they can develop into even more serious clinically diagnosed eating disorders. A lot of them start from dieting. Um, so it just goes to show how how harmful they are. Um, dieting can affect your metabolism. It increases cravings and binges. Um, it can cause your hunger and fullness cues to be really blunted. Um, and it can um, create a really negative relationship with yourself, um, understandably so. You know, it, it massively impacts your self-esteem, self-worth, mental health, emotional well-being. Um, if you end up doing multiple diets over, over years, so you're on and off diets, you know, you can actually put yourself at risk of um, health issues just because of the strain it puts on your vital organs. So there's just really no good things to say about dieting. Um, and it, it just really does need to be made ever so clear um, just to help you sort of come to that acceptance for yourself that, that they're just not helpful. Um, and there's plenty of other ways that you can be healthy uh, that does feel empowering, which is, which is intuitive eating. Um, so I hope I hope that helps um, and that you've taken away some sort of useful information from this video that you can get started on in your own time. Um, I've got the Intuitive Eating Beginners Guide for you if you're very, very new to this work and you just want to kind of know a little bit more about what it involves and whether it's something you might want to, to do yourself. Um, it's in the description below, so you're welcome to download that. It's also full of resources as well and links to the Intuitive Eating books, so you're welcome to, to download that um, and see what you think. And if you have had a look at the information, you've got the books, uh, the workbooks and things, and you've downloaded the guide and you're ready to do more with healing your relationship with food and your body, I offer one-to-one -one coaching to help people sort of accelerate their um, healing around this um, and really sort of get those breakthroughs and, and get that progress with this wonderful framework so that you can live that life of your best health and just feeling free and content so if you do think you might like to consider working with me you're very welcome to just click the link um in the description below for my calendar and then you can select a day and time that you'd like to have a it's a complimentary half an hour chat and um, we can talk a little bit more in detail about your particular sort of health concerns that you'd like some support with um, and then just sort of see whether this would be a good fit um, for us to work together to help you on your journey to being free um, and being truly happy um, and you know I'd be delighted to support you further with that um, in any way that I can.